it is pretty warm. But you do what you gotta do. Alright. Physical Holy is um, a smaller group than I thought it would be. When we uh, when we say that holy is a, a packed or physical holy is a packed element, it's more like uh, thank you very much, Scattershot. What we mean is that holy is packed with quality. Um, there are very, very many, many Holy Knights that can deal a hell of a lot of damage. At least uh, they were able to. And we'll see if that continues on into the future. So uh, right off the bat, we're going to get one of those with uh, Warrior of Light. Oh, after we turn the music down. Warrior of Light is the holder of the physical holy chain, which means he's uh, already pretty damn quality. Uh, the chain is a normal chain plus HP stock 2000 all allies as its uh, secondary trait. Um, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, especially, I think, for Shadow Dragon. Allows you to go through that fight with uh, very little healing, if any healing at all. Um, so I think it's specifically keyed towards that fight, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, it's a chain, and it's pretty damn good, so... Uh, we're, we're working with something so far. Uh, Warrior of Light's USB 10 single attack grants X light blessing and attach holy to the user. Um, uh, it seems fine so far, as long as that ability, or the, that X mode, allows him to use uh, either of the five-star knight abilities to great effect. And uh, before we go into that, what that X mode is, I'm going to show you what two five-star knight abilities I'm referring to, because they are very important to this entire group of knights, <laughs> of physical holy characters. Uh, first on the list is Guardbringer. And that is, uh, does two, three, four single attacks of 1.0 each at uh, varying levels of your defensive dis statistic. Um, the 2736 looks intimidating, intimidating, but it is not as long as you're using Wall. Wall is plus 200% defense. Um, and from there, you can buff it a little further with uh, Protectka. And then there's other buffs as well, like Draw Fire, which you can get from D Divine Cross. And there's, uh, there's buffs that you know occur on people's XMOs and USBs and stuff, uh, which is pretty relevant for Warrior of Light because that's what his does. So Guardbringer is normally on a knight, as long as you're you know building him correctly, he's going to hit for four hits, which uh, gives you a 4.0 multiplier over four hits and gets buffed in the future to five hits. Uh, so it is one of the most damaging five-star abilities in the game. Um, so that's, uh, that's really good, and we would like to see some of these characters be able to use that ability. And uh, next on the list is Assault Saber, which will be coming out with the Final Fantasy Tactics event. Um, Raccoon, thank you very much. Uh, Assault Super comes out with the Final Fantasy Tactics Thank you. I'm glad you're able to watch it at all. Um, so it's five single attacks of 3.55. What you're doing is you're sacrificing 0.45 of your multiplier off of Guardbringer 
by not having a defensive uh, requirement, which is useful for some knights. So um, it's a war between those two as a high damage ability, with Divine Cross as kind of the, the equalizer, uh, where you can give yourself Draw of Fire, which is plus 100% defense to help out at meeting that requirement. Okay. Um, oh, and St. Cross, well, was one of the coolest and most damaging abilities way back in the day. Actually just falls off the map. Uh, even when it gets buffed to high regen to the user. Um, unfortunately, it's just a uh, guard bringer is just too good. Hmm, yeah. We also don't need wall to use a salt saber. So you do reduce your defense by 30%. So obviously they're not supposed to be used together. Um, okay. Back to warrior of light. I promise you what we just went over was relevant. Whoa. X mode lights blessing, defense plus 100%. See? That means, uh, ideally, what you would like to do is use Warrior of Light with Guardbringer. Knight abilities deal 5% more damage for each knight ability used, up to 30%. Um, over the course of 15 seconds, it's tough to fit in enough knight abilities to make this uh, all that great for, you know, boosting damage output. Um, unless you've got uh, a certain knight called Marsh in your party. So it's not really that spectacular of a USB, but it's good enough. It's good enough because Guardbringer is as good as it is. It's at least good enough to be enough of an assisting soul break to worry of light, as though he actually you know, needed one, um, to ensure that he's S after uh, you know looking at his chain. He also has a, a USB as or OSB as well. And then uh, going into his legends area, Grant's last stand in Sentinel at the beginning of the battle. Uh, and here we see that he is absolutely supposed to be a guard bringer because Sentinel is a status that stacks with that defense that he gets from his USB. And it stacks with the defense that you get from the draw of fire from uh, Holy or Divine Cross. Uh, Sentinel is plus 200% defense. So uh, Warrior of Light is probably one of the few people that you could make a case for where he's uh, he, he can stack so much defense on himself that he doesn't need wall. Um, or maybe even some of the boosting abilities to get his defense up to Guardbringer uh, maximum hits. Um, other than that, <laughs> it's actually not that great. Uh, because it doesn't boost his damage. It only boosts his damage if you're not using wall. So you could work around this in a not that inconvenient way. Um, and his LM1 is actually just bad. Uh, some people, let's, let's say Garland for instance, at least his LM1 increases his dark damage by 10%. You'd prefer something stronger that you can swap with his LMR or something, but at least it's usable. Uh, Warrior of Lights is reduced damage taken by holy attacks by 10%. It's not, it's, it's not usable because normally if something's doing holy attacks, what, what kind of damage is it dealing? Or what, what, what uh, element is it vulnerable to? It's dark. It's uh, it's for a different type of character. It's just um, it's really just awful. Uh, and Warrior of Light's LMR is uh, nothing to. It's not good at all. So uh, it's actually not that great of a legend dive unless you plan on running Warrior of Light in a no wall team, which maybe may become a thing if you get Warrior of Light CSB. Um, give it a go. I uh, remember Warrior Flight gets all of these plus defense buffs. 
<laughs> he doesn't get plus uh, resistance buffs, and there is a buff cap um, that he will hit really easily of uh, two hundred, about two hundred and fifty percent of your um, of your base stats. So even his defense, it, while it gets to some pretty extreme levels, it's not uh, unkill unkillable status by physical attacks. Okay, so uh, Warrior of Light cheats because he uses a CSB. Uh, Furion is next. Furion is a weird guy because he is not a knight, uh, and he has not he has no access to holy damaging abilities. But uh, all of his soul breaks, all of his important soul breaks, deal holy damage. Uh, his BSB, his OSB, and his USB. Starting with his USB. Double trouble. Ten single attacks. Grants X loyal shield and attach holy to the user. X mode loyal shield. Uh, attack plus 30%, cast speed times 2 plus point, uh, point 0.5 increase in attacks or cast speed on top of that for each attack used during the duration of the status, up to 6.5. Um, this is, this could be good. This could be good if he had a way to deal holy damage, other than his burst soul break. So he is a character that absolutely positively requires um, an entrust. Otherwise, uh, his USB is quite useless. He does holy damage, and then you... You life siphon a lot. And then you use it again to get the attach holy, or you use his OSB. It's, um... It's A, because he at least has the capability to do that. Uh, and the BSB, unfortunately, I don't think, uh, it is fine for a BSB, but it, it doesn't increase his damage output to where I would consider him S tier. Yeah. Uh, his BSB, by the way, is a little special. It's an instant cast, uh, grants magic blink one to all allies. Uh, while doing holy damage and the commands are holy. So if you do pair up his BSB and his USB together, it's going to work. Uh, the damage is not going to be uh, anything uh, you know, obscene or crazy. The USB entry is, uh, all, yeah, it is holy. Holy non, holy non on OSB, holy non on BSB. Right. Uh, right, if you're life siphoning into USB spam, um, you're, it's really just not much better than a super soul break at that, at that level. Uh, the only reason that I'm going to be throwing him in A is because uh, you could do this instead with his OSB. Um, and you could potentially pair this up with his BSB for some uh, respectable amounts of damage. Oh, Legend Dive. All right, great. Uh, attack plus 1% for each hit dealt with damaging physical attacks up to 50%. Uh, well, he does do a lot of hits with that cast speed modifier. Well, maybe if you're using a life siphon, then no. Um, anyway, this is a pretty bad Legend Dive. Uh, yes, yeah. Next, Paladin Cecil. Paladin Cecil with his USB was actually pretty cool when it first came out. And I suppose it still does a, a fair amount of damage. But anyway, let's talk about it. Sacred Cross, 10 single attacks, grants X Paladin. HP Sock 6,000 and attach holy to the user. 
So that HP stock 6,000 means that Cecil, the very least, is probably not going to be dying. But this Exmo Paladin is uh, very basic. Uh, it's defense plus 100%. It's obviously supposed to be paired up with, uh, with Guardbringer. So he's another Guardbringer Paladin. Um, his BSB2 is actually just awful. Uh, but he does have an OSB. So what I'm looking at right now with uh, Cecil is basically USB and OSB. Uh, you... Uh, life siphon into the USB or you divine cross into the USB um, and uh, you just start using Guardbringer for some pretty uh, pretty decent damage uh, he doesn't have any boosts to his damage output inside his legend dive and that's probably his main concern uh, and from then on it's uh, it's OSB but other than that like he doesn't have a whole lot going for him it's just attach holy really in Guardbringer, and the HP stock is nice. I, I wonder if it's like relevant, because obviously he can taunt, and he does want to taunt with Divine Cross most likely to give him pl uh, plus one hundred percent more attack, or defense. Sorry, defense. But his Legend Dive. It's a 40% chance to cover physical attacks to target allies, reducing damage taken by 50%, which is nice with his USB. Uh, I think Cecil is worthy of A, because what I see from Cecil right now is his desire to use stuff like Divine Cross and the ability to cover PHY attacks. And uh, the interesting part about this LM2 is this allows him to uh, cover P uh, area of effect PHY attacks. So, I would think that Cecil, with his HP Sock 6000, may, uh, may be a good, a good character to bring to a no-heal team. Uh, there's, there's a, this is one of those uh, categories that has a low, or a high floor, um, because of Guardbringer, and because Cecil can use Guardbringer. Uh, an Enholy Guardbringer is a 4.0 multiplier in, increased to a 6.0 multiplier just every turn for, you know, for nothing, really. Um, he can deal damage, and I think the interesting part about Cecil is that he can enable no heal teams better than a lot of other people can. Because he absorbs so much damage that the party would, would have otherwise taken. Um, so, I... I do believe he does more damage than Firion, or comparable damage to Firion, and also has a lot of benefit outside of that, too. Uh, well, there is a Final Fantasy II event coming out in Japan this week, I believe. So, it is going to be hard. Uh, we'll see. Furion may be dropped. But, we'll see as we go on. Seodora. Uh Would definitely be in the lower tiers. Because uh, I don't think the utility his BSB provides uh, is really all that great for a team anymore. But, he gets... Uh, did I say USB? I meant BSB, if I did. Uh, because he does get a USB uh, very soon in the Final Fantasy IV event. And that changes things. Uh, Sayodor's USB Trinity Slash. Uh, 10 single attacks at 0.72 each. Uh, attack and resistance plus 30% to the user. Grants Attach Holy and Sentinel. Um, this allows him to become a Guardbringer mod. Uh, the Sentinel is plus 200% defense where everyone else receives less, and he gets attack and resistance to add on to it. Uh, so he is uh, competent at being a Guardbringer as well. So he would have been lower, but uh, this is a good USB. Um, and his Legend Dive, I believe, 
is nine. Uh, he does, yeah. Okay, so it's a percent chance to cast an ability that restores HP for. Okay, so every time he uses a knight ability, he has uh, a chance to heal the lowest HP member of a party. Well, that's why I went over Guardbringer at, uh, before I started the tier, because there's going to be so many people that... And it's, it's the reason why some of them are as good as they are. It's, it's less their, you know, stuff. It's more their... Uh, but, right, I mean, we don't have any S yet besides the, the chain, so there's got to be something cool in here, right? Uh, Sador, I wonder. He gets cover. Knight abilities deal 15% more damage. I think Sador would deal more damage than Cecil would. No, it's not saying much. Because there's really not that much, you know, separating any of the guard bringers that we've seen so far. So. Hey. Celeste. There's probably going to be some shaking up in the A by the end. So I think it's pretty obvious. Uh, so Celeste is defined not by a USB. She doesn't have one of those yet. Uh, she could use one, but she's defined by her BSB2, which is eight single attacks, attack and defense plus 35% to the user for 25 seconds, grants haste, high runic, and burst mode to the user. Um, so this has a lot more to do with her dealing holy damage than it does with her do dealing ice damage. Um, for a few reasons. Uh, first of all, her OSB is Holy and Wind, so it, it it's the the middle part of the Venn diagram with her BSB two. So she has an OSB that she can use with Holy damage. Another is uh, her BSB one um, gives her attach Holy, and it there's nothing really wrong with using both of these together and her legend dive enables you to use them both together because of the way it works. So Celeste's legend dive, uh, LM2, is exploiting elemental weakness grants 50% more soul break points, additive with the default 50% uh, bonus. So uh, what this does is it basically turns uh, her uh, elemental weakness exploiting attacks into all, like almost as good as life siphon. Um, I think it may become as good as Life Siphon at some point uh, with the uh, ability upgrade actually does more than just buff abilities. Um, it buffs their Soul Break generation as well. All right, Celeste does not want to use Garbringer. She's actually a, a Holy Spellblade. Um, and she gets that Holy Spellblade through her BSB2 commands. Um, and they are good commands. She gets a Dark Bargain command as well as a command that increases her Spellblade damage. Um, it's all holy and ice, but again, most of this is keyed towards holy damage, though she is capable and a competent ice damage dealer. Um, and she has a chance to dual cast spell blades as well. Uh, I think Celeste is maybe one of the more enduring A-tier uh, A characters here. So, I mean, Celeste is going to be life siphoning every single turn. That's, and that's before she uh, casts her, her burst as well, so... Um, that allows her, as long as you have her BSB2, which is her, you know, her foundation, and then another Soul Break to go on top of that, whether it's her, um, uh, OSB or her BSB1, you, she can Life Siphon. LM2, Exploiting Elemental Weakness grants 50, I just went over this. <laughs> okay, I, I will go over this further if you would like. Now, you don't want to use St. Cross. Uh, you can start the fight using St. Cross or uh, Divine Cross. That's fine. Uh, but once you get going into your BSB, there's that. 
Oh, it's not listed here. Well, anyway, um, this Soul Break generation increases to 120. I everyone knows what life siphon does. It's a, it's the best term I can use. I don't think there is better. Um, so this gets buff, buffed up to 120 soul break uh, points every every use. So that's yeah, you know, that's pretty nice. Uh, and it gets buffed in the future. Um, I'm gonna have to dig around in my Discord for a second. Ah, perfect. Uh, soul break generation is increased. So right now, uh, the Saint Cross and Divine Cross are generating sixty. Well, uh, they get moved up to eighty in the future. Unfortunately, uh, since it's elemental, it loses ten, so it actually drops down to seventy. Uh, so seventy uh, plus one hundred percent moves up to one hundred and forty soul break points uh, every turn, uh, and life siphon is one hundred and fifty. It is essentially life siphon. It shows both where. Oh shit! It's the column next to it. Oops. So uh, what this allows Celeste to do is just generate a lot of soul break uh, before and after. Um, if there's anything to be said, it's uh, while she's using her um, commands. Uh, commands don't have as much soul break generation as abilities do. I believe it's just 50, so it just moves up to 100. So it's less once you get it going, which can be a problem. Um, but it does make her, you know, able to use, to deal good damage. Like she's just got a four hit holy command with a plus 15% uh, spell blade modifier on it. Uh, while generating 100 um, soul break points a turn. There's, there's nobody else that can do that, so there's that. Um, so I think it's a, it's more viable for her to use more soul breaks. I prefer it to be your OSB, frankly. Um, I don't think casting your BSB one in the middle of battle is a really good idea. It's probably meant to be used closer to the beginning because it's a party buff of attack and magic 30%. Um, so what I want to do with Celeste is uh, get her BSB online and then attack, attack, attack as much as you can. Just generate all the soul break points that you can and then use as many uh, OSBs as you can. Um, so where does this leave her? She's, she's very strange. It's the only spell blade here. Oh no, Delita. But I would have to say that she does more damage than Fury and Cecil Osaerdor. Does take a while to get her going. Well, eh. Uh, that would be kind of dangerous, I think, Rainmaker. Uh, because then you're using a Mako Might RM on her and reducing her damage output. Yeah, Asher Lock brings up a good point. She does have an Enholy into OSB. And that's good enough for B on most lists. Yeah. And she's got, she does have a lot more going for her. Leo. This A tier is not going to stay the same by the end of this list. Uh, Leo only gets a BSB. Holy and Earth, uh, attack and resistance plus 
uh, well, uh, geez. I'm not even sure Leo really belongs on this list. Maybe he does. He gets Sentinel as one of his commands so he can at least use Guardbringer. But not N Holy. He belongs on the list, but I believe I'm going to be putting him in C. Yeah, he does get Sentinel and Night Quick Cast too. So that's good enough for C. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a C. Uh, well, Beatrix. Finally, someone who does not belong in A. Uh, Beatrix is USB. Just came out recently in Japan. Rose of Finale. Well, that's not English. Uh, 10 single attacks at 0.71 each. Attack and defense plus 30% to the user. Grants attach holy and stock raid follow up. Finally, uh, instead of a, an X mode that just gives her buffs, uh, we have our first chase knight. Cast Stock Raid after dealing damage with a Holy Attack. Let's see what Stock Raid does. Stock Raid is a 6 hit chase, as long as you're using an R5 ability. Um, just like all of the others, I think every single time that someone has this chase, they've been S tier. I don't know of a single time that this has not happened. And this is honestly just no different. Because either you have the defense and you can guard bring her for a million damage, or you use the other ability instead for, you know, 900,000 damage. Not seriously, but... And what's worse is uh, it, gets, it gets better. Right. She has a double cast LM2, so it's a 35% chance. Um, her LMR is... Mm, who cares? But, uh, yeah. Uh, Beatrix can output an extreme amount of damage. More so, more, more holy damage than anybody else we've seen on this list so far. And, uh, that's a pretty, pretty easy S. Carilla. Carilla gets a you buffing USB, well, and you get a buffing BSB as well. You don't actually get anything that has anything to do with holy damage, do you? Well, I mean, besides the, the damage output itself, but it's not, like, focused towards holy. You're just a knight. Do you have a legend dive? 35% chance to grant magic blink one to the user after taking damage from an enemy. That's awful. And a cover LMR, that's awful. What are your BSB commands? I believe you have a sentinel, right? Sentinel and one of its high regen. I think we have our first D tier. She's because she's a she's a buffer. Uh, Carilla's USB is actually really good. Uh, attack, defense, and magic plus thirty percent and grants radiant shield. Um, that's really really good, but it's not. That has nothing to do with you know physical holy. Well, I, I would put her at D. And now I guess she's about where Leo is, as far as, you know, physical holy goes. 
But I think I need to put Kirilla on uh, buffing supports. Because she's much better at that. She's probably B there. Fulminating Radiance. Bosch is always fulminating everything. Uh, 10 single ranged attacks. Defense plus 100% to the user. You know what that means. Grants attach holy and uh, knight rank boost to the user. Knight rank boosts is... The flip side of the Beatrix USB mechanic. Where knight abilities will deal 30% more damage at ability rank 5. Um, so if you consider that Beatrix's um, chase is a 2 point something, where Guardbringer does a 4.0, that means that Beatrix's chase is an increase in damage output by 50% of what she's doing. Uh, and it is spread over 11 hits, so the chance of you capping out uh, and losing damage output is far reduced. Uh, where Bosch has issues there because he's loading 30% of his increased damage output into the, those same 5 hits from uh, Guardbringer. So it's definitely not as good as Beatrix, uh, not by a long shot, but uh, it is pretty strong. I mean, adding 30% knight ability damage to Guardbringer is is very strong. I mean, if you're doing 50,000 damage, you're not you're not crying over what you're doing. So what else does Bosch have? Does have an OSB. I think he's the best of the guard bringers that we've seen so far because of that 30% damage output or that damage increase from for guard bringer. So another A. Can't wait to clean that tier up. Um Invilia. Uh, whew. she has an attach holy BSB. That's it. I don't even think, she, think she's usable. I think I'm just gonna remove her from the list. Just having attach holy is not enough. Oh, Bosch and his legend dive. Thank you. Uh, a cover. Just like Cecil's, he has a cover LM2 and attach holy at the beginning of the battle for his. Um, LMR. Does Bosch have interesting BSB commands? I don't think so. Yeah, only uh, grants retaliate and one is five attacks of exploiting elemental weakness. So that's a, that's a 2.6 multiplier. It's pretty low. It's just, it's another burst that doesn't survive the ability upgrade. It doesn't survive the existence of Guardbringer. Just a glorified attach holy super soul break. Ramsa. Oh, 
What are you doing here? So, Ramzan. Uh, is an S tier buffing support. That's what he does. However, Rom's have it has an interesting BSB too that makes him uniquely suited for some holy battles. Hello, Marco. So he grants haste attach uh, or attack plus 30 per, or 50 percent and grants uh, attach holy in burst mode to the user. He can't guard bringer, but that's okay because after buffing the party, he's actually actually able to use a five hit 2.7. Uh, this is actually it's like. It's, it's just neat. I don't know. Maybe I wanted to call attention to it because he's like, he's C because it's only a 2.7 and uh, it, it pays a penalty. The 2.7 is actually a pretty high multiplier, uh, but it pays a penalty. Um, it doesn't generate any soul break. So if you're going to be using this, you better be prepared for, you know, that soul break to be the only one he uses or uh, him not using in trust at all. Um, I think... Rams's BSB2 is uniquely suited for the Shadow Dragon fight because of uh, Rams's Legend Dive. Uh, not his dive, his LMR. Uh, True Hero grants instant cast one at the beginning of the battle and begins a round with a full ATB gauge. Um, so what this prov uh, allows him to do is instantly, as soon as the battle starts, you know, it's the first, you know, tick off the timer, uh, this allows him to use his BSB, which means he's going to be acting, you know, more times than other people get a chance to. Uh, what's, what's interesting about this in the Shadow Dragon fight is this allows him to use his Command 1 during uh, the first 10 seconds of the fight to um, get damage from your buffer toward uh, reducing, you know, Shadow Dragon past the certain point where you don't have to deal with the, the Black Fang insta-kill mechanic. So he's kind of interesting for that. But it's not like I can actually evaluate this realistically. So we're just going to toss him off the list. <laughs> uh, we're on Physical Holy. I will talk about his BSB2 in much more detail when I look at uh, buffing supports. It probably, Ricky. Probably. But maybe not. I don't want to assume that people have a team, you know, to get places. Maybe they've got, you know, Cecil's BSB1 or something. And uh, they really do need it to squeak by. So anyway, Agrius. Agrius is USB, Faithful Knight Sword. 10 single attacks, attack and magic minus 50% attach wholly to the user and knight plus 15% boost to the user. Um, this is meant to be used with the assault ability. Because she gains no defense from any of this. Um, with its focus on debuffing, it, it does do a fair amount of damage uh, with her as a knight. Just, um, I think it's worthy of A because of her... Her BSB adds a little bit to it, and her good OSB does. Um, but it's really her legend dive. 
I think is a 30% chance of minor and pearl target after using a knight ability on an enemy, and a 25% chance of dual cast knight abilities. Um, she can do a fairly strong amount of damage uh, with her USB and the uh, the assault. What is it called again? Assault saber with her dual cast and has the chance to inflict uh, imperil while she's doing it. So it's good enough for A. Just um, it stinks that there was like Agris and Beatrix were the the duo for so long because of their BSBs. And then Agris' USB comes out and it's like, okay, it's kind of neat. And then Beatrix's USB comes out and it just blows everyone's mind. Uh, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that they stopped being the duo. Delita. Since Delita is more of a spell blade than he is a knight, with a 35% chance to uh, dual cast spell blades, uh, he definitely isn't as good in his holy characteristic as he is in the others. So he's uh, holy fire, lightning, and ice. And he can do those other three elements really well because there's spell blades for them, but the only spell blade that he has available to him to use with this is in his BSB. And while Celeste has, suffers from the same problem, Celeste is built around her BSB. Delita is actually built around his USB. If you want to get those spell blade, holy spell blades, you're going to need to entrust to Delita to use both his USB and BSB together. You have not missed Orlando. So I, I honestly think his, uh, his holy is pretty damn weak. B may be moved down to C, depending on what happens with this A tier. Because if those A's start dropping down to B, then Delita pro can't hang with any of them, so he'll drop down to C. Uh, next up we have Orlando, uh, which... I do have to talk about because unlike, uh, yeah, I just, I do have to talk about him. Uh, I did already on his earth. When I talked about his earth, yeah, I did talk about him. Uh, he, he was earth S tier. Um, and he actually only gets better with holy because he has access to an OSB. Um, yeah, what else can I say? Uh, Orlando's USB, 12 single attacks, uh, that auto crit, and he gets a 25 second status in cross slash that allows him to auto crit on everything that he does, and X Sword Saint allows him to, uh, ability double night and darkness abilities, so... That's an Assault Saber um, times two, so 7.1 multiplier every single turn. Uh, even more because he's auto-critting on five attacks, so that's uh, plus 50% more damage. So that's 11.5, uh, 11.6 uh, or 7 multiplier every single turn, and it gets worse from there. Because Orlando has a 25% chance to dual cast Night or Darkness abilities and starts the battle with Haste and Instant Cast 3. Uh, yeah. Whatever. I, he's casting an OSB every turn, and possibly more if he hits that 25% dual cast. It's not, it's not close, but Marsh, 
Marsh, just like he was on Earth, is actually better than Holy. So Marsh was S on Earth because Marsh's USB allows you to just spam Earth abilities while giving the entire party, uh, or the entire, yeah, the entire party who's in the front row, um, high quick cast. Physical high quick cast, so there's got to be physical characters. Um, he's better here, slightly, because the entry to his USB is holy. So that exploits, uh, oh, and he gets attached holy, so he's doing a hell of a lot more damage. Uh, on um, holy as he is doing on earth, but um, yeah, so it's a, it's an easy yes because of the way his speed combo works. I mean, granting high quick cast to your entire party every turn, including himself, is stupid. Oh, also. Marsh can dual cast knight, can't he? Yeah, 35% chance of dual cast knight. So, he's, he's no slouch at dealing damage himself. Is it worth using uh, TJC's OSB to make his USB and subsequent knight abilities even more powerful? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. You could, Ricky. But his value is in the amount of hits that he does, not the multiply. Or, yeah, no, you're right. Because if he's auto-critting, that means he's hitting at a high high numbers, so the higher numbers that you're hitting, the more valuable Thunder God status is. Because you want to attack faster instead of harder. Uh, yes, Terra, it is. Okay, so let's take a look at this A tier. I think uh, Cecil and Theodore can drop, Furion can drop. Delita can drop. Uh, Corilla can just be removed. She's a physical deep or a physical buffer. Leo belongs here, but I do need to drop him to D. What the hell? Why would you do that? Well, Cecil's neat. Uh, it's just more like the game hasn't given us enough reason to value tanks anymore. The, the game has definitely moved towards a, an offense is better than defense type thing. Because the offense, you know, ends the fight quicker and protects you from...
I kind of like where this list went. Everyone else? 